With the commission on elections failing to acquire the source code for the precinct count optical scan machines for the midterm polls, Comelec Chairman Sixto Brillantes Jr. says next month's automated elections can still push through. However, some experts and officials fear the lack of a source code could nullify the results of the polls. Joining us this morning is former Comelec Commissioner Gus Lagman to talk to us about this issue and other pressing matters on the elections. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Ameline. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll start first with how significant or why is the source code of the PICOS that significant for us to have? Okay. When you automate the precinct counting, then the transparency is lost. We don't see how the votes are counted. We don't even know if the ballots were read properly. We don't know that. In 2010, I didn't know whether my ballot was uh, read properly and counted properly. And that's why in the law, it says that the source code, and I will explain what source code means, mm -mm. Um, needs to be reviewed by two, part, by two groups. One is the, um, an international certification body, mm -hmm. and uh, any interested political party or group in the Philippines, okay? The reason why we need to, or it's the source code that we review, is that's the one that's human readable. Mm -hmm. uh, the source code is the output of what the computer programmer writes. Mm -hmm. uh, what the computer programmer writes are the instructions or commands mm -hmm. to the machine. To what because, to do with the, On with what your vote. it should do, mm -hmm, with for example, vote. If, uh, if there's a mark opposite candidate one, then add one to the counter corresponding to candidate one. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are the kind of commands and instructions. And they're English-like mm -hmm. or formula-like. And if there will be a problem, because you have the source code, you can now you do can something review. about you, it. You can find out whether mm -hmm. it was written correctly. And there have been cases in the U.S. where the code uh, had what we call program bugs. Oh, th that has happened many times in the U.S. So we want to find out whether there are no errors in the source code. Mm -hmm. We also want to find out um, if there's no malicious code. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be cheating yes. mechanisms inside the code. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the source code. Yes. However, the source code cannot be understood by the machine. Mm -hmm. The machine can only understand machine language. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also called um, object code or mm -hmm. binary code. Mm -hmm. Now, so what do we do? Uh, the machine cannot understand the source code. The programmers, on the other hand, cannot understand the binary code. Mm -hmm. That is what we call a compiler. Mm -hmm. The compiler is the one that translates mm -hmm. the source code into binary code. Mm -hmm. The compiler is also a computer program. Yes. And you feed the source code to the compiler, mm -hmm. and the output will be binary code mm -hmm. that can be understood mm -hmm. by the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when Comelec says that uh, we don't need the source code because it's There's the binary, binary code, code that runs the uh, that uh, will run the machines, that is correct. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason we want to see the source code is precisely what I said earlier because the counting and the reading is not transparent to the voting public. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the law says that uh, a review must be done by an, an international certification body and any interested political uh, party or group. Mm -hmm. Now, the source code is not normally given or released by the author. Why is that so? Is it a trade secret? It's that a might trade reveal? secret, yes, oh, just right. like uh, um, your Windows, mm -hmm. uh, the Windows uh, system that you have in your PC, mm -hmm. you don't have the source code because that's Microsoft's trade secret, mm -hmm. okay? However, because this is an election system and we need some amount of transparency, the law and specifically says that the source code must be reviewed by an international certification body and it must also be mm -hmm. made available to any political party or group. But there was an international body, the SLI, SLI Global Solutions, who supposedly already reviewed the source code and they said that there was no malicious code and that it can operate properly. Okay, w who said? Mm. Comelec. Were they we have not seen any certification issued by SLI. Um, 
it's, it's so easy for Comelec to just show the certification. Here's the certification saying that SLI uh, uh, has reviewed the source code and that there are no malicious code. Mm -hmm. um, in 2010, it was uh, the same scenario, sir, in it's, 2010. It's the same uh, scenario, the except code. they said that there's nothing wrong with the source code, but there are some issues that will need compensating controls. And there's a long list of compensating controls, which we doubt if Comelec implemented in mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also possible that the uh, certification that SLI might issue eventually, mm -hmm. might also contain some qualifications mm -hmm. that uh, you need to do this and do that in order to correct. So how come, sir, problems? we're still continuing, even if, I understand, even from 2010, now, even during the 2010 elections, we had the same problem. Mm. So it was already in existence since we didn't have the source code then. Why didn't we try to push it now if it was already in, I understand it was also included in the contract when they signed in, as I, I'm assuming Smartmatic, or may, is our contract with Smartmatic or also with Dominion? Uh, there's a contract between Comelec and Smartmatic, yes. and there's a contract between Smartmatic, Smartmatic and, and Dominion. And Dominion. So but there's no contract between Comelec and, and Dominion. Dominion. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, I objected when I was still with the Comelec. I objected to the purchase of the uh, machines for many reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I joined the Comelec in May of 2011, one of the first documents I saw was an email, um, an, a, an email exchange between Comelec and Smartmatic, and they were talking about some 236 issues that need to be fixed by Smartmatic. And until I left one uh, year later, those issues, or not, at least not all of those issues, had We're been fixed mm -hmm. by, um, by Smartmatic. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, I understand that UNA and PPCRV had the chance to review the CCS or the ano yung CCS sir, yung uh, consolidation, consoli and canvassing system. consolidation and canvassing <coughs> system. Now, if they were able to review the CCS, isn't that sufficient enough? and then review and then CCS. No, our election process starts with at the precincts. Mm -hmm. And in the, uh, before the automation, the, uh, the, the ballots were counted manually, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in front of the voting public and where watchers have assigned, are assigned uh, towards the Board of Election Inspectors. In the automated election system, it's the PICOS that reads the ballots mm -hmm. and counts them. Mm -hmm. Then they are transmitted for canvassing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so they're transmitted to the city slash municipal board of canvassers. That's where canvassing starts. Mm -hmm. Municipal, uh, city, municipal board of canvassers, then the results are transmitted to the provincial board of canvassers. And the results of canvassing at the pr province would be transmitted to the National Board of Canvassers, which is Congress mm -hmm. or COMELEC, okay? So the CCS is the system that takes care of canvassing, mm -hmm. but not the, um, the, the actual um, vote, the, the, uh, the number precinct of count. Oh, yes. It's PICOS that does the precinct count. Mm -hmm. And what we have been um, uh, telling COMELEC is that they should not automate the, the precinct count and automate only the canvassing. Because this is where the Dag Bawas happens, you see. Uh, this is the step or the steps that can take as many as 40 days, as mm -hmm. much as 40 days. Uh, this one only takes a day. So you were suggesting manual? Manual precinct counting, and then electronic transmission, mm -hmm. and then automated canvassing. Now, sir, and that's completely transparent. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, if for example, if they were able to get the source code for the CCS, why would they not want to release the PICO source code? I don't know. If they have a copy of the source code, then they should follow the law. It's in the law. Mm -hmm. It's not only in the law, it's also in the terms of reference. When uh, the bidder submitted their bids, uh, they, they've read the terms of reference, uh, meaning the bid specs, and they know that that's required. Uh, as I mentioned, Normally, source codes are not released, but that's in the, the, uh, that in requirement countries, is in the law mm -hmm. and also in the bid specs. In other countries, sir, who also use the automated system, are the source codes also released? Uh, I don't really know. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. But uh, 
I heard only last week that out of the 30 countries that have automated their elections, 18 have gone back to manual for the reason that the uh, uh, reading and the counting of the ballots uh, are not transparent to the voting public. Germany, Netherlands, Ireland, they've all gone back to manual. I think 10 states in the U.S. have gone back to manual mm -hmm. because uh, they said it's important that the voting public understands how their ballots, how their votes were counted. So what will happen to the 2013 polls? Clearly, it seems like we may not still be able to get the source code for the PICOS. Will it be null and void? Some are well, saying... not necessarily, except that we won't know whether the results are credible or not. We won't know. I'm not saying that, they're, that we can't believe the results of the uh, elections, but all I'm saying is I will not know. I will not know because... Uh, because it's not transparent. We don't see how the ballots are counted. It's the machine that counts the ballots, you see. Um, and, and, and that's why one of the solutions is to at least review the source code mm -hmm. so that we can convince ourselves that there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the random manual audit. Um, they statistically choose some presents and there yeah, they're they supposed to count the mm -hmm. ballots manually. Mm -hmm. and compare them. But that them. happens in Cebu, sir, that it didn't match the manual counting and wow. the results of the machine. That is true. In, oh. in 2010, first of all, they did not count right that very evening. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did the random manual audit somewhere that we didn't know mm -hmm. and the results were released 60 days later. And what's funny uh, was that uh, the, the result of the random manual audit did not jive with their conclusion. Mm -hmm. Because the result of the manual audit, of the random manual audit, was a failure. Mm -hmm. And yet their conclusion was it was successful. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what can the COMELEC do now? Now that, the, now that the source code seems to still be not in our hands and the elections is very yeah. near. And then also, sir, they're thinking of filing a case against Smartmatic. What else can they do? Um, well, number one, when the case between Smartmatic and Dominion uh, happened last year, mm -hmm. um, Smartmatic filed a case against Dominion in September of 2012 uh, because Dominion terminated their license uh, in May 2012. During that time, what the Comelec should, should have done was filed a case against Smartmatic and returned the machines and recovered the money. That's what they should have done. But they did not. Uh, as early as about two or three months ago, when things didn't look too good about the uh, source code uh, release, I, uh, I said in some interviews that uh, what the Comelec should do is um, take a very serious look at their contingency plan, mm -hmm. their plan B and start implementing the, uh, the contingency plan together with their preparations in parallel with their preparations for PICOS. So if they still couldn't get the source code mm -hmm. at a very late stage, they can jump to the contingency plan. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I don't know if they did that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what uh, well, you know, a project manager would do. Mm -hmm come up with a plan B or yes, even a plan C. A I mean, this is a mm -hmm. standard uh, project management. Mm -hmm. So I guess, sir, anyway, you still have 13 days. Who knows? Something might happen before then. It's <laughs> a very <laughs> short period. And even if uh, mm -hmm. Dominion says, OK, go ahead and review mm -hmm. the source code, it's too late. Mm -hmm. Because uh, source code review uh, will take four mm -hmm. to six months. Mm -hmm. uh, in some instances, even a year. Okay. So, so it's too late. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us this morning. You're welcome.